a welcome to a new vlog. Welcome if you're new here. Hi, I'm Andrea. Welcome back if you're one of my lovely returning friends. It is great to have you all here. I have the biggest smile on my face because I can finally talk about London in these vlogs. So if you're like, wait, what? Go watch the last video that I uploaded. I will have already announced that as you are watching this, I am in London. England. As I am filming this, obviously I'm still here in my apartment. I'm still in Arizona. So just to like reset the vlog and reset myself and just reorient all of us to where these vlogs are at, because again, as you're watching this, I am living my best life in London probably, hopefully. So it is currently Wednesday, May 1st. I am two days post colonoscopy and endoscopy. That will have been two videos ago if you want to see how all of that went. I have not yet posted my grades, but that is imminent. That is like hopefully today. Hopefully that will be part of this vlog. I sent a few, I'm done with 99.5% of my grades. Like I'm done with, I think there's just a few students who have not turned in what I was expecting. I sent emails yesterday saying, final warning, anything not submitted by 9 a.m. today, May 1st, is not going to be counted. It is currently 7.49, so I'm still waiting until 9. I'm actually gonna wait until a little bit after 9. I have an errand I need to run, two errands I need to run. One is time sensitive. I need to be there just before 10 a.m. So I will probably deal with teaching stuff when I get back from that. So hopefully we'll wrap up teaching today. Um, but today is kind of the first <laughs> day that I've been able to really like start actively doing stuff for London. So I've been doing a lot of planning. I've been doing a lot of online shopping. I've been doing some in-store shopping. So I have been doing stuff, um, but it, I kind of knew that with the colonoscopy and final grading and wrapping everything up that the, the bulk of the active preparation and packing was going to start kind of today. And so I'm going to be vlogging as much as I can between today and Tuesday when I leave. Tuesday is the travel day, so I've got just under a week. Tuesday is the travel day, so whatever I vlog on that day will probably be part of the London vlogs. Day one of a travel series is always the travel day. This will be our fourth time going to London as a channel, so yay, field trip, taking you all along with me virtually. I know a lot of you discovered this channel through a previous London vlog series, so I'm really excited to take us back as like a channel, but then personally I'm also really, really excited. I'm also very anxious. <laughs> first time traveling in four years, first time traveling post-pandemic. Like I would be anxious traveling even if the pandemic hadn't happened. Just first time in four years is anxiety inducing for me, but then you add on just everything that's happened over the last four years and that's just making my anxiety even worse. I'm dealing with it and I'm distracting myself from it so I think these vlogs will be really good. I'm gonna try to vlog as much as I can between now and Tuesday. I can't believe it. I should probably do my goodwill drop off today which means I need to itemize everything. I'm just looking at, I've got this big box of stuff that needs to go to the charity shop. So I think that's one of the things I can do before I go. I need, I need my errand this morning is to pick up skincare and then I need to stop at CVS and get my prescriptions. I've had to call my doctor to get approval to renew two of my prescriptions early because they were gonna run out during my trip. So I think that's all gone correctly gotten the notification from CVS that both of them are ready to be picked up so I don't want to wait because if there is something wrong then I'm gonna need the rest of this week to get that sorted out so skincare and CVS and then I think we'll add on Goodwill so I'm gonna itemize that box so I know what I'm taking and then I, this desk this whole area has gotten so bad I've got 
if you could see what I'm seeing. <laughs> got a drying rack of clothing that's now dry that needs to be put away. I've got a basket, fabric basket of clean laundry that I'm setting aside because some of that stuff is like on the maybe list. It's on the possibility list of going. I'll explain my packing process later. There's stuff all over my desk so like I can't sit at my desk. I've been grading on the couch because I was doing some my final grading yesterday while I was still kind of recovering from my colonoscopy. I was feeling okay yesterday but was definitely tired so I didn't want to sit at my desk. I've got Amazon envelope wrappers and boxes from deliveries. I've got a lineup of shoes, new shoes. So yeah, it's a mess in here. So today I don't think there's gonna be much packing that happens. But my big full but my big goal as far as packing and preparation for the trip is to get my usual packing planning packing area set up. There's a certain way I like to have everything set up. I haven't been able to do that early because then you all would have seen it in the back of a vlog. So we're doing it today. So today's goal is to get everything cleaned up and organized and get my packing set up, kind of packing area set up and ready to go so that over the next few days as I'm doing laundry and things like that, things can just get put into the preparation area and be ready for later. Like Sunday and Monday is probably when I'm gonna actually like start putting things into packing cubes and suitcases and stuff. So for the next hour and a half before I have to go, I'm gonna do all that. I've been for my walk already, so you will have already seen a few clips of that. It was beautiful this morning. Anyway, I'm rambling, but yay! It's London packing preparation time. That's exciting, so I hope you are excited. And yeah, let's, let's get on with it. Okay, it is a little bit later in the afternoon. It's 1.07. I am finally sitting down to work and to hopefully finish my final grades. I just wanna get them done. I've just been doing, oh, I need to put my cards back. I had to call my doctor's office, my GI doctor's office, because they're requesting more tests. So update, I guess. I'll do like a bigger update recap once we've had more tests, but like for those of you who are watching the vlogs regularly, little update for you all. <laughs> After finishing the colonoscopy vlog, like the whole vlog I was putting together for that, I did get the pathology report and everything. But things fine. So I mentioned in that vlog that there were two polyps that were removed. One of them turned out to be precancerous. So I think in that last vlog, which is fine, just for anyone who doesn't know, it's fine. <laughs> It's good that it was removed. There's nothing else now that needs to be done except instead of going back in seven to 10 years, like I mentioned in the, at the end of the vlog, I will go back in five years. They're just gonna check on me a little bit sooner than they would, but they removed it, it's all good. And so all of that is kind of 
done and fine but obviously the colonoscopy and endoscopy didn't reveal what was anything that was an obvious cause or trigger for the change in symptoms that I've been experiencing so the next step is a CT enterography some kind of scan is all I know I need to look up like what exactly it is and so I now have that booked in for July and I've got to do some lab work the day before it doesn't have the same kind of prep the only thing is I can't have food for four hours prior so I'm doing it first thing in the morning so I can have dinner and then just wake up and go so I don't have to be fasting for like 24 hours or do the same kind of extensive prep although apparently the prep I did for the colonoscopy and the endoscopy my my aunt who I've mentioned is a nurse in that department she was like look at your report and see what your BBPS score was and it's basically a score that just shows how cleaned out your co your colon was <laughs> and so I sent her what it said and she's like that's the best score you can get so I was an overachiever without even really realizing it. I mean, I was following those instructions to the letter because I did not want to have to go, I didn't want anything to go wrong. I didn't want to have to do another one. So I just wanted this one to like be as good as it could possibly be as in terms of what the doctor could see. So yeah, apparently I really followed the instructions. <laughs> and my colon was as empty as it possibly could be. So that made me smile this morning when my aunt told me that. So yeah, so everything's moving forward with that. I I'm now glad that I, like really glad, like even if nothing else happens from this, even if it all does turn out that it was just, uh, it's just IBS, I'm really glad that I went to see the doctor and started this whole process and got that colonoscopy because that, polyp that turned out to be precancerous you know if left untreated would have become colon cancer and whether it would have taken I don't know how long it would take for that process to happen but like I'm 43 I probably wouldn't have had a colonoscopy ordered for me like for standard preventative measures until I'm 50 that's seven years and so what what could that polyp have done in seven years? It's just, if you're coming up for your 50, you know, your, your first colonoscopy, don't push it off, just go do it. And if you're having any change in your bowel habits, in your GI tract habits, if things just aren't quite right, like as scary as it is, and I'm saying this as a, plus size woman who deals with weight stigma and fat phobia from doctors all the time. This is probably the first doctor that has just been so weight neutral, which has just been amazing. But like as someone who has legitimate medical anxiety and gets really worked up about these things, I'm telling you, go see the doctor. Know how to advocate for yourself, but if we are our best judges, if we feel like something is wrong, we, have, we owe it to ourselves to go to the doctor. So that's my little soapbox moment. I'm just really glad now that I went because I don't know what it would have been like if I'd waited until I was 50. It might have been okay. It might have still been just precancerous. Now I don't have to worry about it because it's been removed. I will keep you all updated in July. I will probably vlog a bit of the CTE and I think that's the last test that she mentioned when I went in for my first consult she mentioned that we would do the colonoscopy and the endoscopy and see what those showed and if that didn't show anything obvious that was causing the problems then the next step would be the CTE so I had a feeling this was going to be the the next step so when her office messaged me through the portal yesterday and said she's ordering this next test I was like, okay, cool, let's let's roll with that. So I kind of knew this was going to be the next step. This will look at the small intestines, which they can't send a scope up through. And so we'll see if there's anything obvious there. And if not, I think from what I remember of our first consultation, this is the last test to see if there's anything like obvious 
and if all this comes back negative and normal and everything's clear and looks good then it probably is going to be IBS and then we will move forward with a pl treatment plan for the IBS so I'll keep you updated but before I get to final grading I thought I would show you what I got from my esthetician I don't go for regular facials anymore but I still stay connected with my former esthetician I want to go back and get facials again at some point I just haven't it's either I, I either can afford the skincare or the facials I can't really do both and the skincare I use every day so um, there's really no point in getting regular facials if you're not using really good skincare on a daily basis. It was good to see her again and catch up a little bit and pick up some new bits to restock. So not everything was in. I'm going to go back on Monday. She said the remaining items she's ordered and they should arrive Monday. And she's going to text me as soon as they're ready. But what what was in are some of my holy grail original products I've used. So long time viewers know I'm obsessed with Eminence Organic Skin Care. This is one of the first products I ever used from them. It's their Clear Skin Probiotic Cleanser. I love this. And this bottle, it's 8.4 fluid ounces. This lasts me, no joke, like a solid year if not a little bit more. You only use a half a pump. It lasts a really long time and that's why I love it. Also from the Clear Skin Probiotic line, I got the Probiotic Moisturizer. These were two of the first products I started using back when I had very bad cystic acne and these are two that really helped with that. So really glad. I'm nearly out of this one. I've got probably like I'm down the bottle feels almost empty in my shower and I've completely run out of the moisturizer so I wanted to be able to decant both of those to take to London with me. Then I also got the Hibiscus Ultra Lift Eye Cream. What I love about this one, and I'm almost out of mine so I definitely wanted one, but it has a roller ball applicator so you just press down on this bit here and little bits of the moisturizer come up around the roller ball and then you just roll it around your eyes. This is definitely an in-flight essential for me. The tube that I have is, I've definitely had it for a while. I think there's still quite a fair bit in there, but just to be safe, I'm going to bring the new one with me, and then when I get back, I'll just switch to the old one and use that up and then switch back to this one. But so this won't be decanted. Um, I will just take that as it is and pop that into my in-flight bag. Um, that will be one of my liquids. And then um, there's three more products that are coming. The Strawberry Rhubarb Hyaluronic Serum, the Mangosteen Resurfacing Cleanser, and the Facial Recovery Oil. The Facial Recovery Oil is a holy grail, gold standard, five million gold stars, most repurchased product I own practically. Yeah, I would not want to fly without that. I have a little tiny bit left, but not enough for the whole trip, I don't think. She also threw in a sample of the Clear Skin Probiotic Mask. This should be this little sachet. I'll decant into a little pot. This should be enough for two flights. I love using this as part of my in-flight routine. It's just a little bit more hydrating than a moisturizer, but a thin layer of this is less like a mask and more like just a really thick, heavy moisturizer. So as part of my evening routine at the start of the flight, I will do all my other products and then I will put a thin layer of this over my whole face and then try to get some sleep and then towards the end of the flight when we're coming in to land I will use a little cotton pad and some of my micellar water and we'll just wipe it off or a face wipe wipe it off and then do my morning skincare routine in the flight so wanted to get one of those she gave me a little sample of the facial recovery oil which honestly just popping this in the bottle I have I might not bring the new bottle with me I might just put a little bit extra in the old bottle and take a partially not you know not totally full one so that will help and then because I've got these three products and the other three products I got two free samples so she's given me I was able to choose 
two from two free gifts from three that she had available. So I chose the Marine Flower Peptide Serum, which I've never used. I might bring this with me as well and give that a try throughout the trip. And then she gave me a little bit, a uh, little pot of, I think it's a pot, little baby pot. Oh, it's so cute. This is what their regular moisturizers look, but much bigger. And so this is the Arctic Berry Peptide Radiance Cream. I can't open this quickly, but I can't wait to smell this because I bet this is going to smell amazing because all of Eminence products smell amazing. Ooh, the, the marine peptide, marine flower, that does smell good. So yeah, so that's all my new skincare bits, or some of them. There's three more that are coming, um, but I've already paid for them, so she's just gonna pop them up at the front when they come in, and then I can just run in and grab them. So, yay! So I'm gonna put this back with everything else, right? I'll talk you through this rack that you saw me put up earlier, but First, I want to get everything done for the spring semester so that I can officially <laughs> be on summer break. So fingers crossed, everything goes smoothly. We're just gonna get this done and see if we can wrap up the semester because I do not want this to keep dragging out. Like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm ready to just be done. So I wanna just be done. <laughs> done. I'm so done. But I'm done. Grades are posted. I haven't logged out of the laptop yet. I will do that before I leave for London. I'll shut everything down. But I haven't logged out yet because I, I, I really wanted to try to do some more class prep for the fall. But I'm thinking I will see what I can do tomorrow and Friday. I'm, I'm done doing teaching work for today. I don't want to do any more than I've already done. Um, but I might try to do some tomorrow and Friday. I'm not gonna get everything done, but yeah, it probably would be better for me, honestly, especially since we're starting so late in August this fall. I think I can wait until like August 10th. I might have to do my syllabi before then. If anything, what I might try to do tomorrow and Thursday is just making a lot of notes of like, here's what I want to do in August. And then I'll log off my computer and put that away for the summer. I'm, oh, like I'm done with the hard part. I'm done with this academic year. Anything left to do is more about pre-planning for the coming academic year. But yeah, the year is done. I, I don't know where this whole past academic year has gone. I really, really don't. I want to do some packing do I want no I need to do an Amazon order I will do that later I I need to rest and I have an Amazon order coming I need to keep an eye on that if that's been delivered yet I need to go rest my brain is fried it really is but I'll show you all of this stuff and talk about this a little bit so let me hang I had this hung on the edge so those of you who have followed for any of the previous London vlogs this will be a familiar process but this is how I set everything up so I've got my big suitcase this is the one that will get checked and then I've got my rack and at the base of the rack this is laundry that needs to be done 
this is laundry that is done and these are all things that are in the possibility pile that just aren't hung these are all new shoes that are also in the possibility pile i think i'm bringing the loafers the oxfords and the white sneakers which are super comfortable but these are also possible contenders and i have two more like those ones in different colors but those i've bought more for teaching in the fall and less for the trip because they just won't go with everything so i think it'll be these three shoes and i'll wear those ones on the plane down here i've got my carry-on bag and my personal item bag which will go under the seat um, so what I do when I'm at this stage of packing is everything that needs to come along with me is somewhere in this area. So things that I know I want to keep in my carry-on bag just kind of get dumped in there. Things that I want in my under seat bag will ju just get thrown in there. I've got all my packing cubes and pouches and things like that. And then on the rack are, this is like the possible, the possible stuff. This is not what I'm actually packing, but what I am considering packing. I've got a new trench coat that I bought. You can see there's definitely a palette going on. So my palette for this trip is blue, pink, and tan and white. So I've got my blue and white striped shirt. I've got my plain white cotton blouse. These right here are all like needing to be ironed. So these three shirts aren't going to come with me. I'm just going to bring the blue and white stripe and one of the white shirts. And then I have two new dresses. And I think both of those are going to come with me because they're just too cute. So these need to be steamed and ironed. And then I want to iron these and just put them in the closet so they're ready and then I want to iron these and pack them so these are like two definites but then I've got a few skirts that I'm narrowing down and choosing from I've got a bunch of shirts I've got three different scarves some more shirts leggings that I think are gonna be for my tra travel outfit on the plane um, some cardigans a new pair of jeans that I've bought another cardigan and yeah just lots of different possibilities so i will continue adding to this rack everything that i could think like basically anything that i enjoy wearing that fits and looks good and that fits into this color palette will get added to the rack and it will be way more than i need like i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 shirts on here we're only going to be gone for like 14 or 15 days <laughs> i do not need this many shirts i will probably only bring maybe five shirts so this is going to get edited down but my packing process and like i've got three skirts on here i think i'm only going to bring two skirts the pair of jeans and the two dresses and then a few tops each dress I could wear twice, so like that's four outfits right there. So like I just need to map out how many days. So yeah, at this stage, I'm still adding everything to the rack and just kind of keeping everything in this general staging area. So all the various electronics bits that I know I wanna bring. So I've got different charging blocks, some new SD cards for the vlogs I've bought a power bank for my phone because I know I'm going to bring the Canon G7X, this camera that I'm on right now, my vlogging camera, but I know I'm going to be doing a lot of vlogging on the iPhone, so I'm going to want to have a power bank that I can keep in my handbag, which reminds me, I don't think I've brought my handbag and put it out here, so let's go get that. This is what I've been doing. I've had this rack <laughs> in my bedroom and the suitcases were down here on the floor i don't vlog in my bedroom very much and so this is where i've been hiding everything that i've been collecting and organizing so far but this is the bag i'm gonna bring the handbag so this will go in my carry-on and then will be my handbag once i'm in it unfolds so this is the longchamp le pliage tote i have two of them and 
I love them for London. I could bring the other one too. I could bring either of them because one's pink and one's blue. So both would go with my color palette. But I think the, the blush pink one will be good for this trip. So yeah, everything's in the staging area as new stuff arrives. It'll get added to the staging area and this is just how I'm organizing and I've got space to like lay everything out when I'm ready to open that up. There's space to have that like open over here on the floor in front of the TV and I can sit and just be folding everything and adding it to packing cubes and stuff like that. So I'm not doing any actual packing yet but I'm starting to do a lot of organizing and this was the big thing I wanted to do today was get grades done and posted so check that off and get the suitcase out get the rack out start getting everything a little bit more organized tomorrow I might start narrowing down some of the clothes and just figuring out like really what do I need to pack how many pairs of underwear, how many pairs of socks. I need to do some more laundry. So we're still at that phase of packing. We're still in the like getting organized and getting everything together, but not yet actually packing. And so one of the things I need to do is place this last Amazon order. I just want a few new travel organizer pouches things for my carry-on bag. There were a couple other things on my wish list. I need a vitamin organizer because I don't actually have one. Yeah, I'm gonna go rest. <laughs> it's 3.30 so I'm gonna go rest for at least 30 minutes or so and then I'm gonna do the Amazon order. Yeah, I feel like I'm done. I feel like I've done enough today <laughs> so I'm kind of ready to just go have a snack and drink some more water and just relax for a little bit and then try to do a little bit more. I did start a travel organizer like checklist, to-do list type thing. So I need to look at that, add some things to it, cross some things off it. So I think I'm just gonna be like a planning packing admin rest of the afternoon after I've had a break. I am so tired. <laughs> the end of the day, I've had dinner, so I'm ready to get back on the couch and sit down and relax. I've just been filming for 22 minutes and then deleted it because I started to overthink and then realized I shouldn't have deleted it. I should have just kept it. Traveling is one of those things that just sets off my anxiety. I wish I could be someone that just booked the tickets and then just got excited and I have people who try to tell me like focus on this focus on that don't focus on the anxiety and it's like if it was that easy anxiety wouldn't it wouldn't be a thing like I literally cannot help this I do everything I possibly can and like I am so grateful that I am going to London but I think today is the first day that I'm really letting myself think about it because I've been distracted with the colonoscopy and with the end of the semester and posting final grades and all of that. Today's the first day like getting the clothing rack out and getting all the suitcases out and I've been I've had some Amazon orders arrive. I'll show you those in a minute. I've placed some more Amazon orders so more stuff is coming tomorrow and Friday. I still need to go to Target and Sephora. I placed a Sephora order a while ago. I'll show you what I got in a future packing vlog. I need to 
return one of the items I got. I want to try to exchange it for a different color. It was a lip gloss. So I want to go and exchange that. And I forgot, there were a couple things I forgot. I need to go to Target one more time. So like, I'm just, my brain, my brain is just going a million miles an hour and the anxiety is just getting bad. And I feel really stupid and ungrateful to be feeling this way because boo-hoo, poor me, I get to go to London. There are so many people who would happily take this opportunity. But like, I don't choose to feel anxious. It's, I, I'm not, I don't want to feel this way. I want to just enjoy it. I want to go to London. I have been wanting to go to London since my last trip back in 2019. And I've dealt with travel anxiety and flight anxiety for quite a few years now. I didn't always, I try to always be very clear when I talk about this, that it's not just, it's travel anxiety in general. Will my bags be underweight? Will I have to check my carry-on at the gate? Will my checked bag arrive at baggage claim? Will we get to the hotel okay? Will our hotel room be what we're expecting? Will my body hold up? Will I have an IBS flare on the flight? Like there's just so many things that my brain is like, this could go wrong and this could go wrong and this could go wrong. I can talk myself down from that, but it's so exhausting. And it, it takes some of the fun out. Like I just wanna get to London. I know once I'm in London and we're checked into the hotel, it, a lot of these things I'm stressed about will have already happened or not happened and it'll be in the past and I won't have to worry about it. But in the meantime, my brain is just going through this list of all the things that go wrong. So that's the travel anxiety. Then within that, there's the specific flight anxiety. I don't wanna name, I don't wanna like list out specifics, but like literally anything that could go wrong on a plane is what I am imagining going wrong or what I'm trying not to imagine more accurately. The flight anxiety is a lot harder like my heart will start racing, my breathing gets weird, my whole body gets hot. Like I'm, tr I'm trying not to think about it because like I'm not on the plane yet and it's not worth getting that upset about right now because right now in this moment, I'm safe, I'm fine. If my mom wasn't going with me on this trip, I honestly don't know if I'd be able to get on the plane. That's how bad it is. But then I feel really stupid about that. I feel like I'm talking about this at the end of this vlog because only a fraction of you make it to the end of the vlog and I feel like those of you who watch all the way to the end are the people who will hear me say this and not judge me or not judge me that much. <laughs> so like I'm trying to think of all the positives. I'm trying to think of the fun parts about flying because I, I love, I love the view from above. I love the way that you can see the world from an airplane window seat, right? Like it's a view that so few people really, when you think about it, there are so many people who never get on a plane their entire life and they never see those views. And so I'm trying to think about those things and you know, in-flight movies that I might be able to see. I need to look up what the current offerings are. I think I can look that up through the British Airways app. And then I'm trying to focus on how I'm gonna feel when I'm back in London for the first time and how I'm gonna feel when I get to see Tamsin. There are so many things I am looking forward to about the trip. It just feels like I have this massive wall that I have to get over to get to those things and that's getting through the flight. So yeah, today's the first day that I'm really allowing myself to think about the trip and to think about the fact that I'm actually getting on a plane in less than a week and the anxiety is just getting a bit intense. Yeah, that's where we're at. I did get a couple things. Um, so my Amazon order arrived, the one that was coming today. Most of it was restocking some supplements and vitamins that I was out of, but I did get a couple fun bits. So one thing are these little beauty tools. This one, I'm a little less like fussed about. I wasn't looking for one like this, but this is to like put on moisturizer and stuff and a little bit of facial massage as well. This was the one I was wanting. So you saw earlier the Hibiscus Ultra Lift Eye Cream that I got from 
Eminence. I love it because it has a rollerball. But I have two eye creams from Pacifica that I really do like, and they're my more budget friendly option. And so I alternate and like ration out. Like I just, I don't use the Eminence one every single day, twice a day, because I want to let it last, because that one is very pricey. But I love the rollerball aspect of it. So I was looking up to see if you could get like a rollerball applicator type thing, but just on its own. And that's what this is. So it's not a rollerball, but it is like a ball shape and you would just dot on your eye cream and then use this. Now that this has been in my apartment, it has cooled down. It was warm when I first unpacked it because it was, it's been on a truck all day. But even just now, it feels without even eye cream, like this is gonna be really nice. I might, I might not bring this with me. I think I will though, because I'm gonna bring little pots of the Pacifica eye cream. So I probably will bring this for when I use those. But this might go in my toiletry bag in my checked luggage and not on the plane with me. It might go on the plane, we'll see. Especially this one, because this one might be really nice for the rest of my skincare routine. So they might both go in my toiletry bag, my in-flight bag. I love that they have the little case. I could easily fit a pair of tweezers in here as well, which might be nice. So love that. Then the other thing I got is this travel blanket. But what's really cool about this travel blanket is you roll it up I did this quick, but you roll it up and you put it in the case and it becomes a neck pillow. And I'm kind of excited about this. It, it had mixed reviews on Amazon. Some people said, I don't know that it's like the most comfortable neck pillow, but I mostly want it as a blanket and then the neck pillow casing is just what I will use to like clip this to my bag or wear it around the neck as I board the plane. So I'm gonna wash this, I'm gonna pop this in my laundry pile. It's super soft, it's super soft, very snuggly. The blanket is a really good size, like it will definitely fit up around my neck and go down almost to my ankles if I'm sitting, but it's just so soft. It's so soft. So I was hoping that having a really nice, soft, snuggly blanket that I can also use half of it as a blanket across my upper body and then the other half bunched up. I just thought a blanket would be a little bit more versatile than just a neck pillow because I've had neck pillows in the past and not really liked them. So I'm hoping this will be better. It will keep you updated on that. And then this is also something I can use in the hotel rooms. I'm excited about that. So I'm going to get that washed, added to the wash pile. And those are the two Amazon, fun Amazon things that arrived today. So I will show you the other things I've ordered. I've ordered a bunch of like packing pouches and organizers that I think will be really useful. Not just for traveling, but I think all of them will be useful for other things after the trip. So that'll be good. Um, I don't like buying things that can only be used for like one purpose and like even this like I can bring other places this will be good for road trips this will be good for even here at my desk um, it's just a nice blanket like I can just keep the neck pillow sleeve thing with all my travel stuff but use the blanket here around the apartment in between because it is just a really nice blanket and I love the blush pink color so yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this vlog. I'm sorry for the little bit of a wobble, but that is the reality of me when I travel. It's fun once I get there, and I'm trying to remind myself by the time you are watching this vlog, I will be in London, and my time in London will be half over, honestly, by the time you're watching this. Thinking about that is kind of a reminder to just live in the moment and enjoy the moment and just take each moment as it comes. So. For now, I'm trying to just enjoy the packing and the planning and all of that and not think about the plane. I will think about the plane when I am actually boarding the plane. And at least during, at that point, my mom will be with me. So I won't be alone. And I do think that's gonna make a big, 
big difference. She's so excited. We're gonna have so much fun. Having her there, I think, will help keep the anxiety a little bit lower. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thank you for listening to my little bit of a wobble here at the end. Thank you in advance for not judging me. If you didn't judge me, if you did judge me, I'd prefer it if you would keep it to yourself because the judgment doesn't really help the anxiety. I'm gonna go get back to relaxing and enjoying the rest of my evening. You can leave me a check mark emoji because I checked off finishing final grades. Um, or you can give me the 100, red 100 with the underline under it for quite a few students who did manage to get 100% in the course to leave me some like grading related emojis to let me know which of you lovely people have made it all the way to the end of this vlog. I'm gonna go and I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Keep watching, like stay tuned over the next vlogs. It is going to be very exciting and that's just what I'm trying to focus on. So yeah, I will see you very soon in the next vlog. Thanks for watching this one. Bye!